Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson is an ordained Centers for Spiritual Living minister serving the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore Community as our spiritual director. As a lifelong learner with a passion for self-development, personal transformation, transmutation, and transfiguration, he has frequently been referred to as a Renaissance man and visionary new thought leader who makes complex metaphysical concepts readily understandable and applicable. His mission is to live, move, and be an active member of society who serves to educate, elucidate, and emancipate people and communities to awaken and empower themselves. ACTIVE is an acronym that stands for authentic, compassionate, transparent, inspired, vibrant, and empowered. And he continues to live his bliss as a teacher, minister, author, workshop and seminar facilitator, visual artist, ASL interpreter, and ASL performing artist, mentor, father, grandfather, and more, I give you Reverend Dr. Ray. Uh, let's, let's put our hands together and pray for Tracy. Trace, Trace, whoo, girl, mm, we gonna have to have a conversation later. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you upstairs. Anyhow, good morning and blessings. Uh, we continue our discussion about this amazing thing called our body temple. Today, specifically, we are addressing what it means to love the body. If you were here for Frank's pre-service meditation, then you had the opportunity to go through your entire body and shower it with love and compassion. And if you weren't here for it, because this is recorded, you can always go back any day to partake. So here we are. The best body is the body that is present, that is here, that is now. Keep that in mind, because we're going to talk about that, because there's this aspect of wishing, wanting something other than this body that is present, this body that is here, this body that is now. We can use our bodies to experience a variety of things, deep emotions and expansive feelings. And often we are taught to hate, to dislike, to dismiss our bodies, to apologize for them and to try to force them into some kind of acceptable and narrow social idea. And then there are other times where we personally may ignore our bodies and we think of ourselves as spiritual and we dismiss the body for the body is, it's, it, is, it is a meat suit. As though being human, being spiritual were somehow two separate and exclusive things versus being both and. So today, we come closer to this idea to love and source by coming closer to the concept of and the consciousness of loving our total selves, which includes our bodies. Breathe. So if I were to ask you to stand in front of a mirror naked, and look at yourself, mirror, mirror on the wall, what do I see? Like when you see yourself, I want you to finish this sentence as honestly as you possibly can. My body is. And there's a great many things that we're going to complete that sentence with. Be present to however you answer that, especially if you notice condemnation and judgment 
criticism. My body is. Mm. Be present to that and ask yourself, where does that come from? Is that because there's some idea of my body's not perfect based upon that magazine's image on the cover or that magazine or that cultural concept? My body is. Or do you start off with my body is perfect, it's whole, it is complete, period. No explanation needed. No apology needed. My body is the very temple of the divine. My body is. I strongly encourage you to engage in this practice every day. Stand in front of the mirror and say, my body is, until you get to the place of gratitude, of appreciation, of love. My body is. Mm, my body is. Mm, my body is. Uh, my body is. Uh, my body is. My body is the embodiment of the divine expressing as this human form. My body is sacred. It is holy. And I am grateful. Practice it until that becomes your mantra. India Ari says, my body is beautiful and sacred, and I am going to celebrate it. Are you willing to do that? Are you in a readily available state of, yes, my body is beautiful, just as it is right now. I need not change anything. My body is sacred because that which God is, that which spirit is, can only be sacred. And I celebrate that right now. Breathe. Because I know for many of us, that that's a, ooh, mm, it's not what I was taught. Ooh, but there's things I want to change. Love handles. Ooh, there's that, there's that, there's that thing. Right, ooh, and we criticize ourselves and we judge ourselves. You know, if my nose was a little thinner, you know, if 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 I had some liposuction, liposuction, you don't put liposuction in. If I had some 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 uh, what 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 I don't even know what that is. What did you put in your lips? What is that stuff they make pouty lips, right? Like we always want to judge and compare ourselves versus who do you choose to see when you see you in the mirror? How do you choose to see yourself? I don't care what Vanity Fair magazine says. I don't care what L magazine says. I don't care what people's 100 sexiest. I don't care what I don't care what any of them say. I don't care about the models on the runway. I don't care about the bodybuilding competitions and Miss America and Mr. America. I don't care about any of those. What I care about is how do you choose to see yourself? You get to choose. What thoughts and beliefs do you hold that are impacting how you see yourself? Be mindful where those thoughts come from. None of us are born showing up and saying, wow, look at me. I got all this baby fat. You know, I, I mom, I probably shouldn't eat that extra serving of strained uh, carrots because, you know, I'm watching my weight. None of us do that. We are conditioned and we are trained to become people who shame our bodies. We are conditioned and trained to compare ourselves with others based upon some cultural and societal idea of perfection, the perfect look, the sexy look the healthy look, whatever that is. There was a great episode of the Red Table Talk with the Smith family, Jada, Gammy, and Willow, and their guest was Queen Latifah. And that's exactly what they spoke about, this idea of the culturally imposed idea of body image and how we're being invited to dismiss transcend, let go of that image 
and step into a place of what does it mean for me to be healthy? What does it mean for me to be happy? Now, that may mean making certain changes to diet, to exercise or whatever. That's all well and good. That's an individual thing for us to step into. But the idea is, am I doing that from a place of judgment or from a place of self-love? I love myself so much that I'm going to work on how much I comfort eat or stress eat. I love myself so much that I'm going to engage in some form of physical activity. I love myself and so I do versus I, I just, I hate the way I look. I, I should go to the gym. That, that idea that should is judgment. Why should you? Well, Reverend Ray, I'm, you know, I, I want to look better. I got that. But look better from a place of loving yourself right now. Because if you don't love yourself right now and you get to that place there, you're still not going to love yourself because self-love has nothing to do with our appearance. Self-love has everything to do with the beliefs, the paradigms and the consciousness we hold. So if you can't love yourself right now, you know, the song loving the person, loving who I'm with, loving the person I'm with right now, love yourself right now. Not then. Well, I'll be happy when I retire. No, if you can't be happy now, you're not going to be happy when you retire. Well, I'll be happy when I weigh 100 and blah, blah pounds. If you're not happy now, you're not going to be happy then. If you're not happy now as a single person, you're not going to be happy as a person in a relationship. Love yourself. Be happy with where you are, who you are, and how you are right now. You get to choose to create the image from within, outward. Doesn't matter what other people think or say. Doesn't matter. Not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm staying in my lane. How do you view yourself? Breathe. Because once again, I'm asking a lot of us right now, I'm asking us to completely tear down the wall of separation that has been built around us from the day we were born, actually before then, from before, that has been training us and conditioning us to not like us, like ourselves or love ourselves. Breathe. Ernest Holmes says, the body is the house in which, for the present, you are living and you are being invited. You need to keep it in good repair. And note, he starts off with a right mental attitude, meaning an effective, a life-affirming mental attitude and experiences and around people. Your body is entitled your body is entitled to your respect. Breathe. Because that's a lot. Your body is entitled to your respect. Your body is entitled to your love, your honoring of it, your reverence for it. Self-love. Your own regard for your well-being and happiness. A state of appreciation and gratitude for yourself that grows from the actions within because all actions all external actions start within that support our physical psychological emotional spiritual growth and well-being self love breathe because once again, I know we're we're pushing up against that that cultural wall. Well, if the wall, the Berlin Wall can come down, so can this. Breathe. Holmes also says, there is a cosmic or divine pattern at the center of every organ of the physical body. Our body is some part of the body of God. It is a manifestation of the Supreme Spirit. See, without, without that template, without that divine pattern, there could be no us. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's one reason why we are able to look around and see similar patterns. 
similar concepts. You know, have you ever seen the photos of, you know, they'll show tree branches and roots and the the lungs and the uh, brachial system within the lung and they look like the branches. You see the, the molecules and electrons and you zoom in close enough and you see what looks like a galaxy, the spirals and divine pattern. Your body is a manifestation of God, of spirit, of source. And how you treat it is determining, are you honoring God? You honor God by how you honor yourself. Or, or you dishonor God by how you dishonor yourself. Take that in. Are you honoring the divine or dishonoring the divine? Because how you honor or dishonor yourself, there is only one power and only one presence, that which is God, the infinite, the infinite goodness itself. And what it is, you are. Because there is only it. In the Judeo-Christian tradition, it says, we are made in the image and likeness of. And Yeshua said, be ye therefore perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Be it because you're already made in the image and likeness of it. In the same way, you heard me say this before, in the same way that my physiology shares the DNA of my father and mother, I am made, my DNA is made in the image and likeness of that divine pattern. So if you are made in the image and likeness of the divine, of the one, of life itself, how do you honor it? How do you hold it sacred? That's determined by how you honor you and how you hold you as sacred. Jody Allard says, in terms of learning to accept our bodies, there is no such thing as healthy or unhealthy. There is certainly no magical line that constitutes value or worth. Our bodies are vessels. They are our vessels. And loving them and ourselves means we are treating those vessels with care. I know people who take better care of their cars than they do themselves. They honor their cars more than they honor themselves, their own bodies. They would never disrespect the car. They keep it clean, they keep it sparkly, they keep it neat, but not themselves. They allow junk to be in their mind, in their paradigms, and in their consciousness. What kind of junk, you ask? Animosity, hate, self-deprecation, insults and criticism. All of that stuff makes for a body temple where when you walk in, like if you went to the Taj Mahal, and you saw pizza boxes laying on the ground and upside down Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets, balled up crumpled paper, you would wonder, okay, somebody's not doing their job. This is the Taj Mahal. This is the Great Pyramids of Giza. Why is it all, it's not a garbage can. Are you? Are you a garbage can? Do you have crumpled up thoughts that are ready to be recycled, but you're there, they're still there? That pizza box from 1978 with the crust from 1962 lingering because you don't love yourself, you don't respect yourself, you don't think you're worthy, you don't deserve to be sacred, to be loved, to be valued, to be wanted. And if you don't, if you don't see that, why would we receive it or accept it from someone else? If I'm not giving it to me, why would I, why would I allow Tracy to give it to me? Why would I allow Sue to give it to me? Like, why would I allow someone to honor me, respect me, be reverent to love me if I cannot love myself? And we say we do. 
we say, yes, I, I, I love and receive love, but we receive a thimble's worth rather than a monsoon and typhoon. The wave, the size of the Statue of Liberty could be washing over us with love and compassion, but we're only able to receive a thimble's worth of love and value because that's the extent of our capacity to love ourselves. Breathe. When you look at the acorn and I ask you, how does that acorn become the oak tree? It, does it have to do something? Does it have to, you know, do a vision board to become the oak tree? Does it have to, you know, get, get prayer to become the oak tree? Or is it already, is the oak tree already within the acorn, a divine pattern? Is it already there? Is the intention of life already imprinted within it? Marion Williamson says, an acorn does not have to say, I intend to become an oak tree. Natural intelligence intends that every living thing become the highest form of itself. And that intelligence, God, designs us, shows up as itself, in through and as us, accordingly. That Christ consciousness, that Buddha nature, the Atman, the Brahman, it's already imprinted in you. It is already what you are. Now, for linguistic convenience, we say things like, I intend to become a, a better speaker, a, a millionaire. I intend for linguistic purposes, but be, be aware. Be aware that that thing that gives us the creative potential to be it is already present. It's already there because God is already there. So whatever it is that you are thinking about yourself is what you are becoming. That honor, dishonor, love, disrespect, life affirming or life denying, what you are thinking, what you believe about yourself is what you are becoming. It's one reason why Muhammad Ali and people called him arrogant, but he was praising, recognizing his own divine innate worth. And was like, well, if I don't, if I don't toot my own horn and tell you how great I am, then you're not going to be able to recognize it either because I am placing my lamp, my light under a bushel, under a basket. I am hiding my divinity. And Ali said, no, I will not dim my light. And that is our invitation Think of yourself as already being, already being love, light, joy, powerful, capable. And be mindful of what are you thinking about your body, your self-image, your life? What are the thoughts you think? Do you see that just like the acorn, this divine intelligence is living, moving, and having its beingness? itself in through and as you right now the divine pattern god spirit is expressing as you there is only it you are it i am that i am breathe because i want to make sure you understand this idea for as long as i could remember I've had this, I need to compete. I don't like my body. No matter what my body looked like, I'm too skinny. I'm not muscular enough. I don't like my feet. I don't like my teeth. I don't like my nose. I don't like my hair. I don't like something. Something's not right. I don't like. I don't love. I don't appreciate. For as long as I could remember, back as far as kindergarten, and no matter what I did, no matter what I changed, I still wasn't able to get to that space. 
And even when I, you know, used to model and all kind of stuff and in theater, still didn't matter. Did not love. Now, I would say, it, oh, I, I was really good at telling the Pinocchio. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, I, I was good at lying. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I was excellent at it. And anyone, you could go back and ask people, tell me about Ray. Oh, Ray was confident. And Ray was, yeah, Ray was good at faking the funk. Until, fast forward, years later, Ray goes up to, you know, uh, 300 and some pounds and depression and a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of stuff. And I get to this place of, it's time. I'm ready to love myself. This whole body dysmorphia idea, I'm ready to love myself. And so at 300 and whatever pounds, how do I love myself, forgive myself, go back through all family trauma, all of that stuff, bring it present, love myself, forgive myself, love my family, forgive my family, go do the spiritual work. And when I got there, then a different form of energy came about me, a different form of showing up came about me. Because this idea of losing weight or whatever that is, it's not, it's not about that. It's never about that. It's about showing up as our total selves. That's why we talk about the mental equivalent. The thoughts, the feelings and emotions, the way that we communicate and how we act, how we show up. It's about all of that. And bringing that into divine harmony. Because without that, there is no financial wealth that matters. There is no relationship abundance that matters. There is no enlightenment that matters. None of that matters if we are not able to fully appreciate, love ourselves, no matter what. Breathe. Because even now, where I am now, and Tracy can attest to this, there are times where I catch myself, or Tracy catches me, and she'll say, that's that's a nice affirmation because I will say things like, uh, yeah, except I ate that piece of cake. You know, I really shouldn't ate that cake because now and Tracy said, did you enjoy the cake? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, then be grateful. Just enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I see where you're going with that, Tracy. Right, right. Because I judge myself and criticize myself. You know, I just gained three pounds or I just whatever. I'm not at my goal weight. And there are times that I beat myself up for that kick myself in the butt for that. And then, you know, either Tracy being an excellent accountability partner, or there's times in meditation that I remind myself, dude, slow down, love yourself, appreciate yourself. You know, my therapist brings it up pretty often. You know, how's the body dysmorphia idea? How are you feeling about yourself? And where I am now, even while still working on this, even while still working on this, even while still working on this, where I am now, this is the best I have ever felt, ever been in my entire life. So even when I was whatever, 180 pounds and, you know, fit, tone and muscular, and I'm not that, not that right now. I love myself more now than I did then. When I modeled, I love myself more now than I did then. I appreciate myself far more. So recognize that this is a journey that we are all on. And as Sonia Renee Taylor says, concepts like self-acceptance and body neutrality are not without value. When you have spent, when we, you have spent your entire life at war with your body, these models offer a truce, but you can have more than simply a ceasefire. You can have radical self-love. Why? Because you are already radical self-love. That's why Audre Lord Taylor says, my self-care, my radical self-care is an act of political warfare. Political, why? Because the quote unquote cultural politics, the body politics say that you are supposed to be X size 
why, whatever, and look a certain way. I will not abide by that paradigm. Radical self-love is our invitation. Breathe. This week's journaling practice, spiritual practices, what messages do you send to your body? Your body is listening to everything you're sending it, everything you're thinking about it. Are they loving messages? Are they harmful messages? In what ways have you divorced yourself from your body? You have somehow told your body that it is second rate. What ideas have you had about your body that are from culture or family or some other thing? Where, where Can you identify where those ideas came from? And do you agree with them? How long have you agreed with it? Are you ready to let them go and no longer agree with them? What do you do? Sorry. What do you? Oh, sorry. Ha ha ha. Who? Don't judge me. Who do you know? What person do you know that in their life right now, they are friends with their own body? even with their stuff. Like I can identify right now, I am finally friends with myself, friends with my body. Can you identify people in your life who are friends with their bodies? What would it look like? What would it feel like for you to be your own best friend with your body? What, what would that mean? What would change? What would shift for you? And then lastly, have a conversation with some folks about, are there things about your body that you think are preventing you from loving it? Like what, what, what's going on? Are there things, what, 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 what is preventing me from loving my body? Have a conversation with two people about that and at least one thing that you think is absolutely magnificent about your body. Like what's one thing Breathe. This week's affirmation declaration, I will say it first. And if you feel in alignment with it, say it with me on our second go round. I delight in the wonder of my body. And I treat it kindly. Together. I delight in the wonder of my body. And I treat it kindly. Breathe. Because what we are recognizing is that although this Sunday service is coming to a close, the manner in which God as us ever available to be of service to itself through us as us continues forever. There is never a time when God is done, when God stops, when spirit ceases. And so the manner in which we now go out in the world as love made flesh continues. The manner in which we serve as the ambassadors of joyous laughter continues. The manner in which we go out and sing our song of joy and power and presence continues. And so we recognize the infinitude of life itself, for there is only one life, and that life is God. And that life is, oh, so glorious. And that life is your life right now. And so knowing that and knowing that the law says, yes, I know that this greatness, this goodness, this gloriousness, this power, this truth, forever and ever, is present right here, is recognized right here, is sacredly revered right here as we show up. And knowing that that's what it is and knowing that the law says, yes, I know that that means this entire service is a demonstration of what we refer to as answered prayer. 
Each one of us is the demonstration of our prayers answered. And so let's go out and be the very demonstration of what we know. Prayer works. That is fact. That is truth. And so it is. Namaste. Blessings. Much love.